Okay, so um, my name, as you know, is Dr. Abina Primo. I'm a computer science professor at Houston Philipson University, which is the which is an HBCU that is located in Austin, Texas. Right. Um, the computer science department uh, for Houston Philipson University is located um, or is housed within the School of Business and Technology. So my colleagues uh, um, that I most frequently work with, other than my computer science colleagues, are business colleagues. Um, next slide, please. So the outline for my talk, I'm going to first introduce Houston Tilton University to you. I'm going to go over my project goals, uh, talk about my project activities, talk about the method of delivery for the project, the articles that um, were done, the article writers, these are going to be my co-conspirators with this project. Uh, I'm going to talk about my uh, presentations, which are like something that we were doing as part of the project. We're going to talk about some of the results and conclusions and acknowledgements and questions. All right, next slide. So Houston Tilton University, um, like I said, it is an HBCU that is located in Texas, in the state of Texas. It is the oldest HBCU and the oldest higher, uh, institution of higher education in central Texas, so in the middle area of Texas. This is the oldest higher education institution. Um, this school is a very small school. It has about 1,000 students. Um, it has two uh, colleges. One is the School of Business and Technology, which I'm a part of, and another school, which is the School of Arts and Sciences, which is uh, pretty much, um, they have like the English department, the kinesiology department, and so forth. Um, the university has mostly undergraduate students with two graduate programs. It has a master's in education program and a recently launched um, master's in business administration program. Um, overall, we have about 40 faculty members. Um, and just to give you an idea of um, how small it is. The computer science department consists of myself and one other faculty that's full-time. And we recently uh, hired another faculty that's now finishing up her PhD as well. So we have three people for our department. Just to give you the size of the, um, the, the department that I work in and uh, the university itself. Uh, next slide, please. So, the goal of the project that I'm going to be talking about was to raise awareness of blockchain and fintech among students at Houston Dilton University using a newsletter and on and on campus presentations as requested by faculty. That's the that's like the, the great overarching um, thing that I was aiming to accomplish with this particular project. The objectives um, to help me. Uh, achieve my goal were to uh, distribute nine articles that were easy to read and that encouraged professional development among the readership of the uh, newsletter and also to uh, receive some post article surveys. So every time I sent out an article, I would also follow it up with a survey um, that was distributed to um, distribute it alongside the newsletter. Uh, and based upon those responses, that's how I would be gauging interest and um, what the leadership thought about like the article and how it was written and all of that stuff, right? So to receive post uh, article survey responses from at least 50 students and to conduct um, in-class presentations on the topics discussed in the articles. Next slide, please. So generally my project activities included um, writing articles on hot topics. So um, before the project started in my proposal for uh, when I was applying for the grant, I listed like some hot topics in, um, in blockchain and fintech. Um, and based on those, that's what the articles were written on. Uh, distributing the articles, this was something else. Uh, the articles were distributed on a bi-weekly schedule between about July to uh, beginning of this month here. Okay and supporting the newsletter with presentations. Next slide, please. 
so the method of, the method of delivery for the articles and for activities in the project. So uh, the articles were distributed by email and social media. Um, the School of Business and Technology has a social media page on LinkedIn and the articles were distributed there. In addition, the articles were also distributed to, by me personally to uh, everyone in the faculty, uh, the student and uh, the staff groups. Um, we have like, you know, uh, these groups, email groups, and, uh, I use those email groups in order to distribute um, these, uh, the newsletters by weekly on a bi weekly schedule. In addition to this, the university's president also has a news, has like a magazine. She has like a, an email magazine that she sends out as well. The articles were also resent um, via her newsletter magazine as well. So we have three forms of delivery or distribution with respect to the articles. Uh, presentations, uh, the presentations, uh, whenever, like on a weekly schedule, I would be asking uh, faculty uh, to, to, uh, uh, to invite me and my colleagues who wrote articles in order to, to, um, to do presentations in their classrooms. Like for example, if you were going to be away for a doctor's appointment or so, uh, um, I was encouraging faculty in order to, uh, to actually uh, contact me and you know, schedule a presentation for blockchain or fintech topic that we talked about in the article. Next slide, please. So here were, here's a list of the articles uh, or the titles of the articles that we actually uh, did. Um, so you see we had topics such as, you know, we started off, and this is in the sequence with which they were published. So we started off with like, what is blockchain? What is cryptocurrencies? And then we went into some more sophisticated topics such as uh, what is CeFi, DeFi, and non-fungible tokens and so forth, All right? Now, uh, several of these articles, especially uh, as you were accompanied by a hands-on element where we gave tutorials, right? Um, on how to actually do things like how to create a wallet, and how to do uh, yield, farm, yield farming and uh, how to uh, produce a non-fungible token. All right. All right. So those were some fun things that we uh, we did for our students there. Um, on your screen right now, you see two pictures of some very handsome gentlemen. Uh, these gentlemen were my fellow article writers. The, the top left is Dr. Azubai Okulis. This is the department chair for computer science and also he's like a blockchain enthusiast, okay? Um, very into robotics and so forth, but um, he took time to write some articles for us um, with respect to blockchain, so I'm grateful to him for this. And also in the lower, in the lower uh, right-hand corner is a picture of Dr. Derek Bonwet, and he is a faculty from the business department and he is an avid cryptocurrency researcher as well. He has like one or two papers published in cryptography and, and then on cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. All right, so this was my team in addition to myself. Um, these were my other two article writers. Next slide, please. So uh, the presentations, I was a little bit disappointed with this aspect of my project. Um, faculty did not request any presentations. I think this is possibly due to the COVID-19 uh, precautions on campus where we had smaller class sizes and we were trying to minimize a lot of um, uh, in-person interactions with students or with people in general. Um, so even like our invited guests and so forth that we had um, in the schools, they all did virtual presentations instead of in-person presentations. However, Dr. Bonuet and I did conduct a virtual FinTech workshop that went over uh, several of the articles and um, we had like a decent participation with this. We had 15 attendants, one of which was a student. The interest for this particular workshop actually came primarily from the faculty and the staff at the university, which I thought was very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, the faculty and the staff, they were, they were very interested very interested in like um, several in, in the blockchain and putting, you know, buying cryptocurrency and um, conducting all of these things. 
Uh, yeah, next slide, please. So I don't have the time to show you um, the results from uh, you know the survey results from each article that I did. So I picked one article, and this article was the article that had the most responses um, from what I saw. Um, this article was uh, how do you create a cryptocurrency wallet. And this is to give you an idea of some of the data that I collected um, from the post article surveys uh, that was uh, that were uh, so the surveys that were distributed with each newsletter article. Um, this is the, this is a sample of what that data would look like. So one of the questions that I ask is which of the following describes you? And you see here for this particular survey we have fifty six responses, and of those, uh, what was that number? 35% about were undergraduate students, and no, not 35%, 35% were graduate students, and about 62% were um, undergraduate students. Okay, so we had um, a lot of um, undergraduate students uh, participating as expected, uh, given the percentage of the school that they made up. Um, what, uh, I also asked this other one, uh, which of the following best describes you? And, and this one here was about whether or not they were a full-time or a part-time student. Um, so the school has an ADP program, which is an evening program. And one of the reasons why I decided on doing um, a newsletter rather than like a an in-person, like weekly uh, workshop series on campus was because I knew that um, these students never really had a lot of uh, they, they don't they're not usually exposed to a lot of uh, activities because they're they're night students so they come in at like around four o'clock and they leave at like ten o'clock um, so I wanted to do an activity that could include these students as well um, not just our regular full time active uh, students so as you can see uh, we had we definitely had participation from the adult degree program uh, students as well. All right, um, and if you look at the bottom, you'll see that with respect to the majors, um, we had participation from many majors, right? So it wasn't just computer science students or uh, business students, uh, students just from you know school that I'm a part of that were participating inside the surveys, right? We had students from English, mathematics, history, biology, computer science, business administration, computer information science, uh, systems, psychology, and so forth. Okay, so next slide. So here are the post article survey results in summary um, uh, with respect to my main project goals. Um, this, this is a summary for uh, nine, uh, seven, seven of the nine articles. Right? I haven't put the results in here for the last two, um, last two actually, two. Uh, yeah, so. In total, uh, from the surveys I've received, uh, like for the seven articles, I received uh, 93 responses. Do you remember earlier I told you my aim was to receive 50, so I received more than 50 uh, post article responses. And if you look, uh, you'll see that consistently everyone found the articles to be easy to use. And I asked this question, um, I asked this additional question of, you know, would you like to attend a conference based upon what it is that you read? in the article and you see that consistently as well um, students or the readership students faculty staff etc they responded that you know this article um, they didn't make them want to attend a conference and a conference uh, is an example of like, professional development activity so i'm going to take this as saying that um, you know, based upon based upon uh, after having read the article um, the readership found it found the articles to be easy to read, as well as uh, more encouraged to participate in further professional development activities with respect to blockchain and data. Next slide. All right, so conclusions. Uh, newsletter reached a wide variety of students. This is evidence in the leadership samples collected from the post article surveys. The adult degree program slash evening students uh, and full-time students were also uh, participating. That means that you know I didn't just have a student; I had my students, right? It was very diverse, right? My part, my readership was very diverse. 
Uh, we have students from the College of Arts and Sciences and School of Business and Technology. And we have students from many different majors as well. Um, the expected reach of the, news, the newsletter, um, that's from the post artist, the sample reach, right, um, was 50 students and our project exceeded this. Uh, the readership found the articles easy to read and follow. The articles encouraged further interest in blockchain and fintech technology. 